This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yeah, welcome back to the Monocast. We're recording this still in 2019, while you, dear listener, are already in the future. <laughs> hey, welcome there, and how are you doing? Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty good. Yeah, we, we uh, met today for a couple of hours uh, in the middle of uh, the quiet season, and yeah. uh, we're enjoying the, the quietness at the office, and then the phone not ringing, and uh, concentrating on Mordek, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we have a pretty nice interview today on the list with, with my friend Norman Pracht, uh, which is later in this episode. We are going to talk about building businesses around open source of all sorts. And of course, uh, with focus on Mordic. Before we go there, um, we're doing this third full podcast plus episode zero. So we're trying to grow up uh, still in the early days, but um, we, we'd love to see more people in the, in the social media. So you can, like always, find the context in the show notes. Show notes, but but add-ons and, and maybe some some sort of discussion in social media of all sorts twitter and co yeah. um we'd also love people to to uh, do even more rating and even reviews on itunes which helps us a lot so if you have other people in your universe who are somehow dealing with modic but magically have not yet discovered the modicast <laughs> please help them find it and uh, help us to love it thanks yeah Okay, um, we had a Christmas gift. Yeah, we did. I, I hope you had many, and, and I had <laughs> is there some very nice ones. But Mordic has a Christmas gift. Uh, Leon, tell us about it. Yeah, we got a um, kind of surprising Christmas gift from John Linhart. Um, he wrote a blog post and a form thread about a Mordic marketplace, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, and he actually named it a Christmas gift, which it really is. Uh, as you know, Mordic plugin installation, uh, third-party plugins anyway, is a bit cumbersome so far. It's, it requires manual command line work, and uh, that's okay for a beginning. Um, yeah, it's 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 okay, but but we can do better. Yeah, we can. And so we all would love to see an actual an actual marketplace and before we have that uh some some advanced mechanism for plugin installation and and uninstallation and uh, we, we had a, a bit of discussion be before the recording of this podcast mm -hmm. that also involved thomas over here um and while while john's forum thread or, or the, the article plus the the thread resulting out of that is mainly focused on on the Technical nitty gritty. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's, it's important, of course, but but it, it is really already dealing with things like uh, timeouts or, or or the best way for installation and and using Composer is at the core of it, and and I love that and and uh, being Im Im uh, able to do a complete install yeah. uh, or upgrade via a Composer for Mordic itself is is fantastic. I love it, um, but. Uh, the discussion over here went a different way. We we focused on on uh, the future of a web UI for installing and uninstalling plugins in Mordic. So um, all te technical aspects aside, uh, we if you think of that, the the really big picture, the wishful thinking for the future, a complete marketplace is of course much more than just installing a plugin. Yeah. It is discovering plugins it is also uh other things like like templates or even services mm -hmm. trainings etc which could be found and discovered via marketplace maybe even purchased and paid for yeah uh maybe even a, a subscription model and then also dealing with uh, gpl issues etc and a ton of other aspects that come along with it so it, it quickly becomes a kind of a monster oh yeah so going one step after another is definitely the right way to go. However, um, does a web UI make sense in the first place? Or is it maybe not such a good idea to have uh, um, technical unsavvy users 
messing around with Mordic plugins and crashing the system, <laughs> whatever. Um, so we had a bit of a hypo uh, hypothesis. Oh my god, <laughs> um, that it, it it might be hurtful and and uh, even a bit tricky for SaaS providers who do not want people to install all sorts of plugins, which um, could mess up the system like completely. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Or, um, however, I think that the pros are winning here. On, on, on the one hand, it is um, just a very convenient thing to have a nice UI for discovering and installing. Yeah, especially if you're like not a tech-savvy person, like I would rate myself. Mm -hmm. It's pretty hard to install and deinstall plugins. And if you have like a nice web UI, um, even someone like me could handle plugins yeah a bit better <laughs> um so i know you have a background on, on, on the wordpress side yeah um what do you think mordic should do just the same as as, Mo as wordpress did or Ooh, the WordPress marketplace is very convenient i mean you have different um like uh different plugins for the same topic talking about uh if you want to have a cookie banner mm -hmm. then you just put in cookie banner and you get 20 plugins mm -hmm. and then you go for the rating like i myself would choose the uh, plugin with the best rating with the most download and i think that's an like idea that Morty could also use mm -hmm. like if you have a rating system and you get to see which plugin was downloaded the most then you would have like um, you could choose easier yeah 20 years yeah if we we look at one step after the other that's definitely not not the f first or the second step oh no it but, isn't but <laughs> but over time it is tremendously important to uh have a good management for the the plugin universe yeah when when multiple things come up when, when new things come up and need to be discoverable not just those that have been uh, downloaded a hundred times but also if if uh, legacy stuff is no longer maintained in, mm -hmm. in a proper fashion and uh, or if there's an important plugin that the community wants to be maintain, maintained but the actual maintainer is gone or, or is, is lazy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh as i said it's, it's complex stuff but but um even starting for, from the marketing perspective explaining to people hey modic's open source you can install your own plugins and here is a command line that you need to it's execute. gruesome yeah yeah so yeah i think it does makes it make a lot of sense to have the web ui obviously as you said um there is more than, than just a list of names to it a description or even a link to click on to to have additional information and documentation etc yeah that also implies, by the way, that there has to be a complementary website, mm -hmm. a web repository for those plugins, which is not GitHub, which may may be served from GitHub, but but whatever the mechanism is. The, but the the high level vision would be really that, right? Yeah, so we have a be. web repository and we have an inline browsing feature in Mordic and. Um, yeah, one click install blah, would blah, be blah. and then it go to, goes all back to, to composer and, and and what have you. Yeah, uh, again, thanks, John, for this fantastic gift, and I, I I think that's also a nice topic for a future interview to to yeah to for sure go further in this discussion. Okay, next up is um, the communication infrastructure in the community. Yeah, there's a new um, addition to the Slack channel. There's a new Slack bot which detects um, maybe misplaced topic which should be placed on a forum instead of Slack. Um, thanks to Roof who configured the bot. Um, it's pretty handy and yeah, it can be annoying at times because it does uh, <laughs> miss detect detections. Yeah. Hey, do you think this is support? I think this might be support. Do you want to go there? No, it's not. Leave me alone. But <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I think it's really valuable, as I said. Yeah. And um, the forum is based on this course, and there it's not that important, but there's a pretty handy app, which is called Discourse Hub. It's an awful name, but the app is pretty handy to use the forum, even on um, mobile. So you can use it on iOS, Android. And to complete the confusion, it's a uh, Discourse and not Discord. Discord is a um, community uh, communication application. Uh, comparable to Slack, mm. 
but um, there has been some issues using Discord, so it's this course for the forum and not Discord to complete the conclusion. Okay, so Discord w was considered a, an alternative to Slack and the decision was not to use it for now. And uh, yeah, this course hub, I, I use it too. And it's, it's really nice to, to have uh, a nifty tool on your iPhone um, to, to join the conversation at all times. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think that's worth bringing that up. This, this duality between chat and, and a forum yeah. has always been confusion to people and uh, still is. So thanks, Ruth, for, for helping <laughs> enforcing <laughs> the, the right way to use it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One thing that came up in Slack was um, a suggestion by our friend Nico Grinauer in Austria. Mm -hmm. Hello, Austria. <laughs> um, who did something for Drupal Austria called Open Collective, which oh. is basically a channel for financial sponsoring. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, why not do this for Mordic too? And I think I love the idea. Um, it feels a bit early though to do that on a, on the global level on the on the on the uh, organizational level because it lacks organization <laughs> yeah we, we would not even know what to do with, with any money raised plus we don't have a legal entity etc yeah. and and frankly i think money is not our worst bottleneck at this point not no. um and so I, 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 as I said, I, I love the idea. It takes organization. The problem is that, that even organizing this uh, requires resources which are sparse at this point. So uh, if we look at how do we use our limited resources best, um, there are other things, Mordic 3, growing the team, etc., uh, where, where money can't really help. Um, so my suggestion would be to... to Go ahead as a private initiative mm -hmm. at this point uh, with a well-defined purpose and a transparent process and everything yep. and say, hey, if you could donate money here, be it a one-timer or a monthly or yearly or whatever, um, if you do that, then we will use it wisely and here's how and here's what we did in the past and all, all that can be done privately. Yep. In my experience, there's another model that works even better than that, and that would be uh, all sorts of crowdfunding for a well-defined specific goal. So here is one thing like a tech manager or a, one thing I want to achieve, maybe mm. an integration with XYZ. Um, and uh, I'm willing to organize this piece of software mm in my own company, with uh, freelancers, with, with third parties, whatever. Um, here is what the features will be, here is what it will cost, and here is how much money needs to be raised. And then uh, I, myself, or as it was like for you, we would definitely be willing to chip in an amount of money and say, okay, yeah, that's worth it, worth it. and uh, uh, like any other crowdfunding too, that works really well in, in open source. So, Nico, if if you feel like doing any of that, I'm I'm fully with you, and I'll chip in. Okay, let's move on to Norman. Norman has been a long-term, uh, yeah, multi contact for me, but also became a friend really quickly. So I'm very happy to have the chance uh, to, uh, to have had the chance. Uh, I think a couple of days before Christmas, really. Um, to have a conversation with him, and here it is. Yeah, today I'm very happy to uh, say hello to Norman, who's an old friend of mine. Uh, so basically one of the very first touch points in the Mordic universe for myself. And I'm, I'm glad you're here today. Hi, Norman. Hi, Eke. How are you doing? Well, I mean, it's a busy end of the uh, year. Uh, we have many things going on in the Mochi community and uh, also for, for my company, so working hard. Yeah, we're recording this uh, close to Christmas, um, so please excuse any noise in the background, background on my side because people are preparing for our agency Christmas celebration that, that involves carrying a bit of beverages, etc. So, <laughs> sorry for that. Yeah, um, again, thanks for your time today. Um, 
I would like to start by asking you to tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're all located, what you are doing with Mautic today, what products you guys offer, who your customers are, etc. So tell us a bit. Yeah, um, so I'm Norman, I'm the general manager at Web Mechanic, and uh, Web Mechanic is offering a cloud version of uh, Mautic open source. Uh, which includes support, maintenance, and also certain type of uh, services like training. Um, we are located in France, but we are currently trying to expand in um, in several uh, countries in Europe. And what we care about, especially, is the different local uh, constraints and laws, and especially GDPR, which is uh, an important topic for marketers in uh, in Europe. Uh, yeah, and who do we target and with who we work for? Uh, with who we work uh, are any type of enterprises um, they could be startup SMBs or large accounts and in both uh, B2C or B2B activities hmm, Fantastic and I know it's a valuable asset in the Mordic ecosystem <laughs> um, but how did all that gets started. I actually never asked you that question. What, what is the history behind Web Mechanic and Mautic? Yeah, the, the, the story is interesting. Um, I think, uh, yeah, the story is telling is nice. So I've been arriving here uh, in this company five years ago. Uh, at that time, Web Mechanic was a web agency with another name. Um, and we were uh, using for our customers uh, marketing automation software called NetResults. Um, who's actually an excellent product founded by Michael Ward and its family in, uh, in the Colorado. Um, and we were using that solution for our customers. And um, at a certain time, after one year I was working on that, um, we really felt that there is an interesting trend on the market concerning this technology in France. And we wanted to switch, so we wanted to switch from the web agency um, experience to, to become a a software vendor, uh, and at the same time we discovered Motic. So, for that was four years ago. Um, we first tried to install it. We tried to understand how it works. We were trying to understand if it answers the, our customer needs, and we finally uh, jumped in. We started to contribute, and, and we finally uh, decided to use that open source technology um, as core of our cloud marketing so solution for our customers. Mm, okay, so so you started contributing pretty early up. Did you have any experience with with open source pr prior to Mortic? Never. I mean, this is not true because uh, today, when you're tech, you are almost having experience with open source uh, all along your dev uh, working life. But um, in the web agency, we were working on WordPress, for instance. So we were already using some open source technologies, but we. we weren't really um, getting into the community. We didn't contribute, we didn't comment or give anything to, to the community, really taking a standard WordPress package as do many people today uh, and installing it for our customers and customizing, customizing it. So while joining Motic community, we discovered a young community at that time because I think when we started, it was um, version 1.2 and, and still a, a really early project. Um, but because of the size of the community, uh, there were an interesting space to, to take uh, and a role to, to, to play uh, to help this community growing at that time. So we, we learned open source really with Motic. Okay, and you, you kept going that way all, the, all along and are still a very strong contributor and among the largest in, in total, right? Yeah, the, I mean, um, so today using Motic and, and, and making our customers using Motic is our main work um, and to every day's job. So we are investing a lot of time in Motic, uh, in um, developments, bug fixing, or even community uh, administration. Um, to give you just an example, uh, in 2019, so the current year, we have contributed uh, over 100 times uh, to the code to give features or fix bugs. Wow. Well, excellent. Very good. I, I wished everybody would be doing that. But maybe that should be really the, the main topic of our conversation today is, is uh, how does open source 
really work. The underlying assumption or concept is that the software wins and gets better all the time because of growing contribution. And the contributors, like you, win because they not only have a good and well-known software at hand, but also they um, make themselves a name. And they create grow growing demand for services of all sorts, which they can then sell to others. So, so the fact that the software is li free of license cost does not mean that people don't need professional services around it. Mm. So I know you do uh, SaaS offerings and you do training and, and uh, support, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, in general, what, what sort of services around Mordic make sense to build a business around? Yeah, this is, um, I think, and this is right, and this is the philosophy around open source. This is a win-win situation. Um, the open source grows thanks to contributors, and contributors get um, get this feedback also because the contributions are, are bigger than each feature are better and stuff like that. So um, today I, 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 I see different way uh, of building activities around uh, the open source community. Um, I would say there are three types. First, there are a, a, a first technical uh, layer uh, who's really oriented around hosting, fixing, maintaining, working on updates and stuff like that. So basically, it's a work uh, more oriented for tech technical guys, developers. Most of the time, it could be outsourced. So this is the first type of activities you can find around. A second type of activity uh, can be around the product itself and what it offers. So, um, for instance, with Motic, you can send emails and stuff like that. But you could uh, want to have some extra features uh, like plugging the, the software to a call center because you need to, to call your customers or leads, um, having email templates uh, because you don't have developer in your team and you want to have a, a nice-looking email template, etc. Um, so this is also technical, uh, but more oriented around the, 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 the feature itself. And to finish, there is a third uh, piece of layer where you can... Um, Uh, create services around and make business on. And I think this is maybe the most important today. And I think this is the most important today. It is uh, all around the usage of the product. Um, because having a technical product doesn't make the product working. And this is the same, actually, you can have with the CMS world. You can download a WordPress. It doesn't mean that your WordPress is performing. You need an agency who will advise you how to make the UE, then how to make the UI, then how to make the UX, um, then how to present your product, make content, etc. And you have exactly the same type of issues or challenges to face with a, with a marketing automation solution. Um, you need advices to build a strategy. Uh, maybe it's a web agency can help you on that. Uh, you need to produce some content for your landing pages, your emails, your SMS, etc. And all of those services around the usage of the product are really, really uh, expected and, and searched by uh, enterprises using this type of product. Yeah, I think that covers it all. Basically, I, I find specifically tricky the idea of, of selling specific templates or features to multiple people. I've uh, seen a lot of freelancers or even agencies who offer services like uh, you need an in, in email template, I can do it for you or I can uh, create a custom plugin for you. But there's still no marketplace where you can uh, offer boilerplate templates or plugin like you would for, for WordPress, for instance. People are doing it in, in their own location, but, but there's no common thing like that. Uh, have you heard anything about the, the latest rumors on doing that in, in, in Mautic? Yeah, this is an interesting topic, um, and you're right. To 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 make a community growing, we need to help uh, people that can uh, make some money around it. Uh, the life is easier because more it's attractive in terms of uh, of uh, budget you can win with. More people will come and jump in also. So again, it is win-win. So uh, at a certain point, I think we'll need to find a way um, to make. Um, 
trading much easier as it can be on WordPress, for instance. Um, I know the marketplace is uh, something uh, that the community wants to implement. Uh, I don't believe it will come uh, in, the, in the short months because uh, we currently have uh, other priorities. Yeah. Other priorities. Um, but I believe at the end of the year, we may have some interesting news about it. Cool. Okay. Um, in, in general, do you see any, any change, any increase in, in demand for, for services around Mautic? Um, I wouldn't say I see an increase of demand because the, the demand has always been there. But I feel more um, that there is a, a change of the type of demand. Um, at the very beginning, uh, people wanted that we help them to build campaign in, to create emails for themselves, etc. Because uh, I had the feeling that the, the market was uh, less mature, at least in France um, and in Europe. And more and more, um, those enterprises want to be autonomous. They want to be trained and to use it themselves in their um, uh, own companies. By the way, there is uh, new jobs. You can be a marketing automation manager. It wasn't existing five years ago. Um, and in consequence, uh, it's more about training to be autonomous. And then they need more advanced features. So uh, I see more and more uh, requests to have custom plugins or custom features that answer to a specific needs to a specific market. Mm, yeah, I, I would agree with that, but that might also be in a bubble because our clients are, are tend tend to be larger clients with with more custom needs as opposed to the the SMBs who are yeah in, in different different tiers. Um, I'd like to to get back to the different nature of services like like um, creating campaigns on the one hand, creating plugins coding on the other hand um, do you see any general difference in thinking between the tech and the marketing audience and the service providers uh, and in the way they they do open source um, yeah uh, definitely and this is also something I think we we should work on uh, because today there is a huge space uh, for technical peoples um, and the product itself has been uh, created, the project has been created on a te te technical core team uh, with technical tools, uh, tools to create code, to manage code, to manage version and stuff like that. Um, but at the very beginning, we didn't integrate uh, like marketing teams or stuff like that. Um, and those way of contributing are also very important because they all make the community uh, bigger and better. Um, and if we offer today the only way uh, to contribute through code, uh, we will probably um, miss some different type of brains, like marketers, uh, like, uh, I don't know, researchers, like users or stuff like that, because they don't find a way to express themselves or to give back their feedback, uh, to share the market uh, trends they can see or what they should have met on a competitor's website or stuff like that. So um, there is several ways to contribute. And uh, if you go to the Motic blog, uh, you will see that uh, more and more um, we are uh, calling for contributors, but not only developers, also marketers, community uh, administrator and stuff like that, uh, because you can contribute by publishing some content, by administrating the forums, by um imaginating the future of the features and stuff like that mm -hmm. yeah and, and on top of that or even, even before that i think one one thing we need to work on is make the concept of open source well understood to everybody because in my experience technical people are more familiar with the concept as opposed to people that come from the marketing side and may have never really heard about uh, how open source really works And then the technical barriers, et cetera, that I just mentioned, those are seem to be a recurring theme these days. It comes up again and again. So yeah, it's the way to go. Uh, different question. Open source. We talked about the different type of clients, um, but some have the feeling that open source is always uh, those clients that don't have money anyway. So it's low budget. Um, is it a Trend is it is it a general truth or is is it completely wrong way to think? I think it's wrong. 
even if I can understand it, because uh, maybe people sometimes are greedy or because they simply think because the code is open, then it's free. So it, it probably drains people that are looking for something free. Um, but it's more about uh, how you make your business around it that make the type of customers you have. Um, if I give you some examples, um, for instance, you may know Drupal, who's also... Um, part of Acquia, uh, the <laughs> owner of Motic. Uh, and Drupal is a CMS who is targeting uh, big companies. Uh, if you want a simple and, and, and small project, you don't choose Drupal. Um, and the, the recent communication of Acquia, for instance, uh, was showing that they, they, they target uh, big accounts and, and they want to compete Adobe. And if you know a bit what uh, Adobe uh, is offering, and especially on the marketing cloud solutions, uh, their solution is really expensive, uh, full of features, and uh, not at all uh, targeting uh, low-budget customers. So uh, somehow uh, it's more about how, how you present it and how you install it, how you package it, and all the services around you, you put will you, that will draft the, the type of customers you, you have. Mm. Okay, yeah, that, that's something for the marketing team to to, to work on the, on the messaging and, and uh, move it up and polish it up to avoid yeah, the, the, the impression that that we're we're about low budget and, and um, not exactly. not so high end because the, the tech is frequently high end, but people then don't really believe it because the marketing is not as shiny as the commercial guys. Yeah, yeah agreed. Okay, before we get to the end, um, is there any downside? Is there any risks that, that people should be aware of when, when they consider providing services for an open source product such as Mautic and then being a contributor to? Um, so I wouldn't say there is a risk, but there is uh, something I, I would be happy to share is um, more around the, the open source philosophy. Um, I would love that people really take into consideration that uh, philosophy before jumping in a project or making business around this type of project. Uh, because as we said before, um, this is a win-win situation. And if somehow at a certain point the balance doesn't go correctly on both sides, uh, you may face some frustrations. Uh, and, uh, and this is really something we all should keep in mind. If you join a community and you expect to to make your a part of your business uh, relying on it, uh, you need also to appropriate to yourself this philosophy, which means sharing with the community and sharing with the other people, um, giving back to the community what the community brings to you. And I've been writing about it because uh, I think people uh, miss the information how easy it is to contribute to a community and how important it is to, to help other community members to, to take advantage of what we all do. Also, there is something I would like to highlight is um, that Motic and most of the open source projects are under GPL um, license. Uh, and, and this is something important because this is also part of the, of the philosophy. There is no contract you sign with the community or whatever, but when uh, you for instance, you're an agency and you want to make some custom developments for a customer and stuff like that, you should also encourage uh, your customer or your user or even in your, inside your teams um, to keep what you're doing extra uh, under the same uh, license and to offer it to the community uh, as the community offered you the, the basis for it. So um, you're never constrained, but if you don't play the game, then at certain time, the balance will not go in both sides. So this is something I really would like that people uh, integrate in their, uh, in their way of working with the community when they jump in. Yeah, I agree. I even think it's a good thing for people to publish what they did or, or what they got created. If, if, I have a, if I paid for a custom integration to some CRM, um, then either I can pay for the maintenance for it forever if there's any version upgrades or so or I can make it public public, and, and hope that the community will take over maintenance and, and uh, do the work for me in the future exactly, if you do the work well and you share with other people they will also invest some energy uh, and again this is a positive cycle uh, if you give something other people will give something back and you will take advantage of it this is open source philosophy of community yeah, perfect. Perfect end. Um, 
what's coming next from Web Mechanic? What can we expect in the next couple of months? Um, so first, I would take two weeks of holidays. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, after that, um, so um, uh, we are launch launching like in the current days uh, a new version of our portal. Our portal is kind of an interface interface that allows our users to to manage multi instances to do cross action on cross instances and stuff like that. Uh, but at the very beginning of the year, we would like to start uh, working on a new email builder for the Motic community. Um, we know that today it's a, it's a pain in, in the software because uh, uh, it exists uh, more performing uh, technologies today. Um, and Web Mechanic, uh, as good co contributor, would like to carry that one. Uh, so review the interface uh, for better user experience and having the ability to do more and better. And also uh, adding a new technology in the back uh, who provide a really high quality HTML for different email clients. Wow, love so it. So that's the, the very next. Um, I believe we can achieve that in Q1 uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Uh, that will also depend on, on the community because uh, we'll first make an MVP uh, and then share it with the community, get feedbacks, uh, try to enhance the, the different features around it, and then uh, see with the community uh, how is it accepted to, to merge it in the core. So this is the, the first big step. And then um, we have every year um, something that, that uh, we care about is uh, something we call Automation Day. Um, it's an event around the marketing automation and in general, all the, the different topics that can turn around. Last year, we, we did it uh, uh, in France uh, in September, uh, and the subtopic was content marketing. I can already tell you that in 2020, the, the topic will be marketing automation and uh, user experience. So I think we have a lot to say around it. Uh, so that's something important for us. We, we have about like 300 uh, participants each year. So that's interesting to come and, and to meet different actors of uh, this ecosystem. Fantastic. Wow. Where can people find you on on online? Uh, they can find us uh, on LinkedIn uh, if they want directly to talk to me concerning community or whatever. Uh, and of course, on our website, webmechanic.com, uh, if they want to find some information about our company. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time, Norman. It was a pleasure and, and also a very valuable discussion, I think. Thank so, you for the invitation. Uh, appreciate your time and uh, I talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so what's coming up in the Mordic world? Uh, any events? Um, we have one news in, in managing events, and that's uh, the introduction of asynchronous team meetings. So that's for the Mordic community teams, such as marketing, product, etc. Yep. Uh, where we have had a couple of um, Jitsi calls now, so mm. online meetings. And we always had the problem that, that we have contributors around the globe which are in completely different time zones and it is just impossible to have a, a to schedule a date and time where people in Indonesia can join as well as people in the US. Yeah, that's a problem. Or in Brazil or what have you. Um, so there's no easy way to solve that. Uh, we've had the suggestion to TikTok it, mm -hmm. so, but that also means to exclude either one every second time. Yeah. Um, so what Ruth introduced now is uh, basically extending meetings uh, online. So we, we do the online, uh, the, 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 yeah, online calls. Yeah. And then for every single topic, have a, a thread in, in Slack in the in the proper community forum. Yep. So we would have number f number one introduction, number two past, number three future, future, whatever. And then whatever has been said and done in the meeting is first, and then we can go from there uh, asynchronously, which is great. Works really nicely, even for people who just missed the call or have additional thoughts afterwards. Yep. Uh, I love it. Good. Other than that, um, in for 2020, we did not really do a, a complete outlook here because it feels weird to me to try that. Yes. There's so many, so yeah. many things on so the list. So many things on the list, yeah. I would not even dare do a, a six-month outlook <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm really, really looking forward to it. 
And for myself, my, my top priority, as I already said earlier, is, is really supporting as good as I can to grow the community and to have more people on board, uh, which is the root of everything else. Um, that means to make people aware of it and make, make it transparent how easy it is to get started and that it, after all, is, is really fun and, and very satisfying to, to do that and to, to contribute and make the world a better place, after all, at least in the Nordic world. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and do that in 2020, and we all see you on the other side. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.